What did Danny Masterson from the popular sitcom That 70s Show do to get 30 years behind bars? In 20 words or less, here it is. He was accused of rape by five women, charged with violating three, and went to prison for two. But there's so much more to this story than that. There's even a connection to an infamous serial killer. Stick with us to the end for all the details. When That 70s Show debuted in 1998, it was an instant hit. The show had eight seasons before ending in 2006. Danny Masterson played Stephen Hyde, the bad boy with a heart of gold. But in real life, his victims say he was just bad. One woman testified Danny raped her at his Los Angeles home. She said he gave her a drink, then demanded she get into the jacuzzi. Only minutes later, she felt sick and had trouble seeing. When she asked for help, Danny carried her to a bathroom upstairs, forced his finger down her throat to make her vomit, then dragged her into the shower with him, fondled her, then took her to his bed where she blacked out. She woke up to him violating her. When she fought back, he pulled a gun and told her to shut up. With that in mind, listen to Danny talk to Kevin Pollack on the actor's chat show in this clip posted by journalist Tony Ortega. Your third question comes from your current co-star, Adam Bush. Mm, Sweet Bushy. He DM'd me on the Twitter and said, make sure you ask the Masterson his advice, the best way to make a move on a girl once you've got him back to your place. Oh, you just invite him for a shower. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) That's the move that's been missing. Yeah. You say you need to clean yourself? Well, you know, you say, let's go clean ourselves together. Uh, like, it's conversational. Like, you know, like, we're, you're like, oh, let's do, we should go take a shower. Do you ever pat him on the ass and say, good game, let's hit the showers? After the shower. <laughs> After you've had a good game. <laughs> then you give them a right. good game. Good game. Danny's victim endured a forced shower and rape in 2003. She told her story to police in 2004. Why did she wait a year? That's where the case gets even more complicated. The woman, like most of Danny's accusers, was a member of the Church of Scientology, where Danny Masterson is a lifelong member. She says the church discouraged her from reporting the attack. According to the prosecution, Danny used his church connections like a stay-out-of-jail-free card, all the while flaunting his crimes in plain view. From 1997 to 2003, Danny moonlighted as a celebrity DJ under the name DJ Donkey Punch. Now, that's slang for anal rape, something his victims say he forced on them. In one case, it was so violent and painful, the woman came close to vomiting on the bed. When another victim woke up from her drugged cocktail, only to find Danny on top of her, she fought back. He choked her until she blacked out again. As the allegations against him piled up, the police investigated, but he wasn't charged for any of the attacks until 2017. In 2019, Danny's accusers filed a lawsuit against the Church of Scientology, claiming they tried to stop them from pressing charges. They say they were stalked and harassed by Danny and church goons after they went to the police. Here's what the church had to say to that. Quote, The church has no policy prohibiting or discouraging members from reporting criminal conduct to law enforcement. All allegations to the contrary are totally false. There is no evidence supporting the scandalous allegations that the church harassed the accusers. End quote. But the accusers kept adding up. Another woman to point the finger at Danny is his former live-in girlfriend, Chrissy Bixler. Back in 2001, the couple was five years into a very toxic relationship when she woke up to him on top of her. When she struggled, she says he punched and spit on her. According to her, that wasn't the first or last time. Danny was charged but not convicted for crimes against Chrissy. And she wasn't the only ex to tell the same type of story. His bad behavior finally caught up to him when he was arrested in 2020, but his first trial in 2022 ended without a verdict. The retrial in 2023 finally found him guilty on two of the rape charges. 
After the verdict came in, four of his former co-stars from that 70s show wrote letters to the judge asking for leniency, including Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher. In his letter, Ashton called Danny a role model and a guy who set an extraordinary standard around how you treat other people. People were outraged he would defend a convicted rapist, none more so than Danny's ex, Chrissy. Her relationship with Danny came at the height of his fame on that 70s show, and Mila and Ashton were close friends with Danny on and off the show. After their letters for leniency hit the media, Chrissy took to Instagram to hint at some dark secrets. She wrote, Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you, ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you're just as sick as your mentor. That date has a very sinister significance. On February 21st, 2001, notorious serial killer Michael Gargiulo, better known as the Hollywood Ripper, murdered the girl Ashton Kutcher was dating. Her name was Ashley Ellerin. Ashton came to her apartment to pick her up, but she didn't answer his knock. Ashley lay just inside the door, stabbed 47 times. When Ashton heard about the murder, he went to the police to tell them he was there that night. He was worried about his fingerprints and later testified at the killer's trial. That's the official story, but what did Chrissy hear? What was the plan Ashton and Danny Masterson came up with the night Ashley was killed? We may never know, but it's worth wondering about. Here's something else that'll make you clutch your pearls. In her letter to the judge, Mila Kunis called Danny an outstanding older brother figure with exceptional character. Well, I don't know how your older brother acts with you, but I hope he doesn't offer anyone money to force his tongue into your mouth like Danny did to Mila. Watch this. You know what's funny is when she was she was 14 when we started the show i was like 19 right right and they're like okay you guys are going to be making out in this scene and i'm like thinking like wait I this is like slightly illegal say, that's right that's probably your first kiss ever right it was my first kiss why don't you tell what bet you made with danny about our first kiss no it wasn't the first kiss <laughs> no, it was like ahead. a second or third kiss it was the first it was like the first week no, it was not the first week. Whatever, let me tell you what All happened. Right, well, no, let me no, tell no, you what happened. No, no, okay, yeah. so I've never kissed yeah. a guy. So okay. I, was, I was so, I mean, you know, Ash was attractive, and yeah. I was a 14-year-old little girl, and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And it, he, he was very nice about it. He was like, oh, don't worry. So I was like, okay. Then Danny goes to him and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. What would you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some? What? No, 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 no. Ten dollars. You're making it sound like it was like really. Uh, it, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet yeah, going. Yeah. Like, which was? It wasn't very As to whether or not, you know, like you know, you're kissing on the show, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? I, I mean, you would. You, it I depends mean, what kind of an actor you are. I guess. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Danny bets me like 20 bucks that I wouldn't do it. And of hey. course, I'm like, yeah, sure, what's the deal? You and know? then the cops showed up and you got arrested <laughs> pretty much. They but should he never, have, he but never they did it. And I claimed, so did he I claimed so to did. this day he did that. I swear, I swear. Mila, I, never, I so did it. He never did it. I, I didn't so let did him. It. I think he tried, but I, I think no, I kept my mouth so cold. Yeah, come on. yeah. Chrissy hinted that Danny might have done more than that to an underage Mila. On Instagram, she wrote, Dear Mila, I pray you begin to process what you experienced as a child on that set. Your old interviews are very telling. I also know what happened in Toronto and after. Question, if that's what you view as a normal relationship with a big brother figure, then I feel very sad for you and I hope you consider getting into therapy. Talk about a couple of bombshell hints. In the wake of the backlash against them, Ashton and Mila took to Instagram to explain why they wrote those letters. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. Danny always claimed he was innocent of all charges, but here's what the judge had to say about his attitude. Mr. Masterson, you are not the victim here. Your actions 20 years ago took away another person's voice and choice. But with Danny's guilty verdict and lengthy prison sentence, 
his victims have their voice back, and their parting words to him were these, You are pathetic, disturbed, and completely violent. The world is better off with you in prison. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.